Hi, my name is Yvonne and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where I can share with you my passion for RVing and my love for recreating regional food specialties from all across the country right here in my Tango RV Kitchen. Today we're going to visit Riverside, California and I'm going to show you how to make a trio of salsas. If you love citrus, you have to love Riverside, California, the birthplace of the America West's citrus industry. In fact, in the late 1800s, one of the leading citizens there in Riverside received a gift of two navel orange trees from their friends in Brazil. Those two navel orange trees are the parent trees of all of the navel oranges on the west coast of America. In fact, one of those parent trees is still living and you can visit it in Riverside. In fact, it still bears fruit. While you're in Riverside, you'll want to visit the Mission Inn, a favorite overnight stop for presidents and movie stars alike. If you'd like, you can take a tour. You need to make reservations in advance and you can see some of the spots in the Mission Inn that are not accessible to the general public. If you enjoy tours, you might pop over to Pacific Coachworks, the manufacturer of the Tango travel trailers. You can take a great tour across their production line, and if you aren't in Riverside, California, or you won't be in Riverside, log on to my website at rvcookingshow.com, and you can take a tour with me, a virtual tour, How's That Tango Made? Now here we are in my Tango travel trailer in the galley and I have to tell you a few things that I really love about this galley. First of all, there's the radius countertop and you'll notice the counter is very deep. This allows me to leave my small appliances like my toaster and my coffee maker on the counter and still have plenty of working space. My kitchen faucet has a sprayer head, a great pot filler when I'm making pasta. One of my favorite things though about the Tango Galley is the sink covers. Now every RV comes with sink covers and they expand your countertop space. But Tango has made their sink covers out of cutting board material. Now when I toured the Tango factory, I talked to Matt Shea who is the sales and marketing manager and I asked him, Matt, what are some of the great foods that Riverside is known for? And he told me salsa. So today we'll make three different kinds of salsa. We'll make a pico de gallo, a salsa verde, and a mango salsa. So let's get started. The first salsa that we'll make today is our pico de gallo. We're going to have anywhere from three quarters of a pound to a pound of ripe red tomatoes. We've got about a quarter to a half a cup of sweet onion. We've got some fresh cilantro, just roughly chopped. A handful, this is about a half a cup. And we've got one jalapeno pepper cut up into small pieces. This is so simple. All we're going to do is mix these ingredients together. So let's get it going. Now we're just going to put it in a bowl. It's that easy. We're going to put the cover on our bowl and we're going to allow the pico de gallo to sit out on our countertop for at least one hour before serving. When you put tomatoes in the refrigerator, somehow it zaps the texture and the flavor. So leave it out on the counter and be prepared to eat the entire batch of pico de gallo in one sitting. It doesn't keep very well. Salsa Verde is one of my favorite salsas. It's green salsa. And this particular recipe I particularly love because I love all the ingredients in it. Now one of the unusual ingredients and the base ingredient in Salsa Verde is a tomatillo, otherwise known as a husk tomato. You can find this in your grocery section at your supermarket. And what you're looking for is a tomatillo that has filled out its husk, maybe even broken through its husk a little bit, and you want it to be nice and green. This recipe is going to use about a pound of tomatillos. Now, to use a tomatillo, what you want to do is you want to take the husk off. Just peel the husk back. It's got a little stem. You're going to break it off. And you will notice the tomatillo was slightly sticky. So we're going to rinse this. The tomatillo, as well as all the other ingredients in salsa verde, need to be basically pulverized. It's a soupy, tasty salsa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my tomatillo up 
into smaller pieces. If you have a food processor, this is where this comes in handy. Now this cilantro is one medium bunch of cilantro and I've cut it up into very, very fine pieces. So we're going to add that to our bowl. We're going to add six cloves of garlic. Now I love garlic and the garlic flavor does stand out in this salsa verde. If you're not as much of a garlic lover as I am, consider using three cloves. Give it a try. Start there. I'm going to put those in my little mini chopper. I'm also going to use three serrano peppers. If you like it spicier, real spicy, you might add more. If you're not quite on the spice boat, add just one and see what you think. Into my little chopper they go. I'm going to pulverize them and then add them to our bowl. To our green concoction, we're going to add one tablespoon of cider vinegar. I'm going to mix everything to combine well. This beautiful salsa verde needs to meld flavors. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in our bowl, we're going to put the lid on, and we're going to refrigerate it for at least one hour. Salsa verde keeps well in the refrigerator for several days. It even tastes better day after day. Mango salsa may sound decadent, like something you might only have in a restaurant, but it is so simple to prepare at home and it is absolutely delicious. Inside the mango is a somewhat flat, oval-shaped pit. So what we're going to do is we're going to slice down the side of the pit, take a nice sharp knife. We are going to cut the mango just straight down exactly like that. You can hear the pit. We'll want to score our mango just like this into nice bite-sized pieces. Be careful not to cut yourself. Holding your mango over your bowl, turn it upside down and turn it inside out. Using a spoon, remove all of your little chunky scores from your mango skin. To our mango, we are going to add some roughly chopped cilantro, some chopped red onion. We'll want one jalapeno pepper, and we're going to finish our mango salsa off with a quarter cup of orange juice. Mix everything up. So all of our ingredients are mixed together, but if you'd like an extra zing, Consider squeezing half a lime over the mango salsa. This just brings out the flavors. Now this mango salsa is ready to eat in about 10 minutes. Let the flavors sit, meld and mingle, and then you'll be ready to enjoy your exotic and delicious mango salsa. Well, here we have our trio of salsas, and they are a feast for the eyes as well as the taste buds. We've got our pico de gallo, which is a fresh salsa, and I like to serve it almost like a side salad to be eaten with a fork. You serve this with a quesadilla or a fajita, and it'll be a hit. Our salsa verde is absolutely delicious, brimming with garlic and serrano peppers, cilantro, and tomatillos. It's fabulous served atop a burrito or a taco, and I also like to serve it just to dip with chips and, of course, some sour cream because it's a little spicy and the sour cream goes great with that heat. Our decadent mango salsa is absolutely fabulous with blackened or jerk chicken or shrimp and is delightful topping a white grilled fish like a halibut or a white sea bass. You can find recipes for all three of these salsas as well as information about Riverside, California, how to tour the Tango Travel Trailer Factory, or even our video, How's That Tango Made, on our website at rvcookingshow.com. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. We love seeing you here, and we can't wait to see you again next time right here, you guessed it, on the RV Cooking Show. <laughs>